Good morning everybody. It is Monday morning right now and we're gonna be putting bedding in today. Usually we want to do this on Wednesdays, but for whatever reason I couldn't do it on Wednesdays. So we're gonna be doing it today. So we're just bringing all the ladies up into the parlor right now. Then we will uh, get this group scraped out and we'll start tossing bedding in. Well, I'm pretty much done the morning shift here. Uh, we cleaned the parlor down, cleaned the back, needled a few cows, and I had a cow. So pretty much all done. Dima's feeding right now, so I don't have to do that this morning. We got a few other small kind of maintenance things, things to keep on top of that we're gonna be doing this morning around the parlor barn here. And uh, we're gonna get started with that right now. First thing, we got this little uh, oil pump can. I think there's like 10W30 oil in here or something. Just basic oil. And these sequencing gates need to be lubricated a little bit. Uh, they don't turn over so nicely as they should. And it's just stainless steel pipe around a smaller stainless steel pipe in here. So it needs a little bit of lubricant every once in a while. Uh, you could spray WD-40 in there, but this stuff is gonna last longer, just basic solid oil. So that's what we're gonna start out with. It's getting messy, I better use two hands. <laughs> So that one's lubricated pretty good now. What these do, basically when a cow comes up to here, she can't turn away and she kind of only can go into the parlor. But when, what ends up happening when this thing is pretty tough and doesn't want to slide so easily, it'll get stuck over like this. And then a cow that doesn't know that this thing just pushes out of the way, she won't even try to push it out of the way. She'll just kind of see it and she'll get stuck. She won't know that she can just push through it. And that's pretty annoying when cows are just supposed to flow right through here, get right up into that parlor. But if there's something holding them back, then uh, it sucks. So basically it should just kind of come back to center and it has to be pretty lubricated for that to happen. So now it's pretty good. Do the other side. That's awesome. The next thing we're gonna do is just behind the bulk tank here. I'm just gonna switch this toe of iodine with this one here. This one's pretty much empty. At least it's getting there. Just gets sucked out of here. Because the ADF milk claws, they uh, automatically apply that teat dip to the cow. And it's gotta come from somewhere, so this is where it comes from. We just gotta keep switching it out. Behind this big silver uh, cover here, these are all the pumps. Just sits behind this casing and it sucks it up from this tote and it also sucks up a disinfectant from that smaller tote right there. Puts it in here and then eventually it makes its way to the milk claw where it's applied to the cow's teats after they're done being milked. So we gotta switch this iodine out otherwise eventually we're gonna stop getting iodine in the parlor. And then this is what sucks it out. So we're gonna pull that out. It's like kind of the nozzle.
So now we just put all the empties in the back corner here. Put the lids back on. The dealer that brings us all of our chemicals will take this back and they'll reuse it. That's what happens with everything. It all goes back. It gets reused. So this is the iodine disinfectant. I believe this is an acid detergent. And there's some other soaps here too. Ton of stuff. Now that we're all done with that, we'll rinse everything off. Keep it nice and clean back here. There we go, switched around, all nice and clean. Next thing we're gonna do is service the crowd gate. There's a bunch of grease cirques, just like equipment. Some bearings on there, need some grease. So we're gonna go grab a grease gun. And there's some oil reservoirs up there. I'm gonna check on those. Make sure there's still some oil in there. Otherwise, we'll top those up as well. So we got the grease gun. I can go and grease this right away. But there's a boot wash drain that is plugged up here. And it's really easy to do with two guys. Dima's still here, so I'm gonna ask him if he can help me with that. And uh, it's just the one over there. Drain's plugged. So here, when you walk in the barn, we like to keep things clean. So you can just rinse your boots off. But the drain in there is completely plugged. It's the downside with these things, a bunch of mud, rocks, whatever gets in there. So we're gonna try and unplug it now. The fire hose is just around the corner. So if we stick it down in there, open the fire hose up, stick it down in there, someone holds it here, and then someone turns it on over there and you can usually unplug them like this. Not the pump. The valve should be shut though. Okay. Not yet. Okay, I'll open it. Okay, turn it off. Oh, it's going down. Well, that's a ton of crap in there. I think I'm gonna scoop this sud crap out here. There's a ton of stuff in here. That is a half full pail of crap that just came out of there. So dark it is outside now. The day kind of got away from us there. I still want to get this crowd gate greased up though. So we got the grease gun there and we're going to go and grease that thing. See if I can walk to the other end. Well, that's a pretty intelligent spot to put a grease cirque right there. Gotta love it when that happens. Like I literally just can't get the angle. There we go. Now we're going to check the oil reservoirs up in there. It 
So we're gonna top this one up. There's a little bit in there, but I can see it's not going up this little straw here that's supposed to suck it up. The oil in these reservoirs just get dripped onto the chain here and keep the chain lubricated, but it is looking a little bit dry, so gotta get some oil in here. So we'll get the slider put back and then we'll be done for the day. All right, guys, we did a bunch of maintenance in there yesterday. This morning, I am going to try to finish hauling bales. We literally only have like six or seven loads to haul. That arm broke again. I figured I wouldn't bore you guys with showing that being fixed again, but it's fixed up good now. It should be pretty solid. We did a ton of welding on there, cutting parts off, and uh, it should be good now. It's, it's looking good now. So we'll be able to finish those six loads. And I'm not gonna bore you guys or shorten you guys this thing go again. So hopefully, hopefully, if I snap my fingers now, the next shot will be done hauling bales for 2020. Let's hope it works. Uh, but that is the last load, so that did work. Uh, we're done hauling bales for 2020. That's all of the wheat bales. We have a bunch of canola bales and barley bales on the other side of the farm. Hauled probably a total of 1,500-ish straw bales off the fields this fall. So I'm gonna go and drop this bale wagon off at our neighbors now because we're done. And we actually own this bale wagon 50-50 with one of our neighbors. Uh, they're not family, they're just good neighbors. And a bale wagon like this isn't something you need like at a certain date in the year. You just need it like at some point during the fall or some point during the summer. And you can kind of pretty easily share one of these wagons. So uh, I'm gonna go drop it off at their place. Before we drop it off though, I'm gonna head over to the Asquith Hotel and grab some lunch and uh, then we'll get back to work after that. So let's see how it looks. Oh yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we got ourselves a Hilton burger with fries. There's a little onion ring on the burger. It's pretty good. And then a nice glass of whole milk straight out of the bulk tank. Now that's a 10 out of 10 lunch. I usually do go home to my parents' place for lunch every day. So that's what you do when you're a single 21 year old farmer. But um, yeah, when they're not home, you gotta figure it out yourself. I usually end up going over to the bar and grabbing something to go, bringing it back for lunch. So that's what we're doing. But uh, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. That's a good lunch right there. Woo. All right, back to work. Oh man. Gotta wait a little bit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hurry up, hurry up. Let's go. Come on. Bail wagon is at the neighbors. MX285 is unhooked and sitting right there. Now I'm gonna hop into our New Holland wheel loader here and we're gonna rip out to the field there. It's one mini bale. I should have taken it back to the farm in the baler, but I just kicked it out there for whatever reason. So I gotta go pick it up. I would have otherwise used the bail wagon to pick that one full size bale up there because that MX-285 in the bale wagon is quicker, but since that small bale is there, it's just too small for that bale picker to pick up. We made it out to the field, and this bale right here is the reason why I had to bring the loader out here. Otherwise, I would have taken that bale wagon out here one more time for just the two bales. It is faster, the tractor drives a lot faster, but if I were to try and pick this little bale up with that bale wagon, the arms would have gone right beside it, right on the outside, and I wouldn't have been able to get it up onto that trailer. That's why we're taking the long route. Why is this small bale out here, you ask? That's a good question. Uh, it's because once you get to the end of the field, you know, you never have the perfect amount of swath length left out in the field to make one perfectly big bale. Uh, so you just kick it out. there's like two separate kind of sections to the grapple on this bucket and uh, this is why park them right by the rest those are all the wheat bales we got so 
quite a few here. We're gonna feed them all. We're just counting exactly how many we got now. Now we know if we need to buy some yet, we might have to, but uh, this is still quite a few that we made on our own. So that's what we got in total. What an afternoon out here. 535 of those wheat bales. We're gonna feed them all, like I said. Uh, we're probably still gonna have to get two or three semi-loads of bales in because that's not actually gonna be enough for the whole year, but uh, that is quite a few. We're gonna toss some bedding in the calf barn here. You can see Dad's ripping in the loader there with a load of bales. Quickly open the back door here. Who's that? This is Fritz, my cat. <laughs> throw the bale and cut the twine at the same time. It goes really quick like this. We'll typically kick it out a little bit here, but the calves usually do a better job of kicking it out themselves. They get pretty crazy when we toss bedding in here. They run around, kick it all out. That'll be good. I should see if I could get one of these GoPros hooked up to one of these calves right after we put bedding in. That would really test out the stabilization of one of these GoPros. <laughs> if you guys made it to the end of the video, comment down below, maintenance is key, because that's what we did in today's episode. If you don't maintain stuff, it only goes downhill real quick. And uh, that is gonna be it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram, at SassDutchKid, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.